Well, from the Collegiate Sports Summit, we'd like to welcome Greg McGarity, the Director of Athletics at the University of Georgia. Greg, um, you have had a, a long career in college athletics, and uh, is there a personal mantra or philosophy about leadership that you have carried with you in the way that you have conducted yourself? Katie, uh, we have tried to exercise uh, servant leadership, really, mm -hmm. in every phase of, of our personal lives for Cheryl and myself, my wife of 40 years now. But I think that's been the overarching deal that I've wanted to project to our staff. Uh, we're there to help others make their dreams come true. Um, I really enjoy seeing individuals develop in our program and we have to always think about us being the people that, that help others attain success. And um, it's never been about us. It's never been about me. Uh, what can we do to make others better? So I think if you come in with that attitude and not feeling like you're the, the AD with all the power in the world, things of that nature. And luckily, I've, my career has been, uh, um, I've been able to really work for a lot of great people that have that same philosophy, that uh, low egos, things that really, really create a tremendous environment to work in. Who, who, have had, who are the people who have had the biggest impact sort of on you and the way that you now lead a department? Well, it all started with Dan McGill, who I've started working uh, alongside when I was just a young boy. And luckily back in the days, back in the 60s and 70s, um, you would, you were, young people were able to be involved in, in college athletics. Dan McGill was the men's tennis coach. He was sports information director. He was the chairman of the Booster Club, so <laughs> he did so many things mm -hmm. and multitasking. And, and Coach McGill, without question, was my first mentor that really I've, I've saddled up to. Uh, Lee Haley, who became, who was the previous athletic director at Auburn, who came to the University of Georgia to help Coach Dooley run the athletic department, was my daily mentor at the University of Georgia and was a, a true person who practiced servant leadership on a, on a daily basis. And then during my professional career at the University of Florida, Jeremy Foley being able to, to provide that same sort of leadership. Uh, so I've just been fortunate to, to be surrounded by great people, to be working in environments that have been very family oriented, uh, very conducive to personal growth and professional growth. And I've probably been the luckiest guy in the world to, to be surrounded by great people. We were treated last night to sort of a fireside chat mm -hmm. with Jeremy. And I know he had a, a, a large sort of transformation and actually he spoke about it here in his leadership style um, where somebody had pointed out, you're not, you're not leading people, you're driving people. Mm -hmm. And he really changed. So what did you learn from him, if you will, from, um, from even that personal transformation and, and change that people make along their journey? Well, I think it's caring about people. Uh, some people have a unique ability to be uh, tremendous rememberers of names and to, to have a deep knowledge of, of maybe things you're going through. And I think that takes time. It's easy to say that you really care about everyone. It's very difficult to practice that, to be mm -hmm. asking if you have a spouse or a friend that's ill or a birthday coming up or a special wedding anniversary or just something in someone's life that uh, that you're aware of and his ability to make everyone feel important for him to make everyone feel like he knew what was going on and if they were having some hardships to be able to address those so I've tried to transform that at Georgia uh, and it's so difficult to do because mm -hmm. you've got to you've got to have a great memory you've got to take the time to devote to that because you can't just dip your toe in the water and do it every now and then. It's something you've got to practice every day. Mm -hmm. And if you have that type of authenticity, uh, people really respect that. So that's probably the, one of the greatest things I've, I've learned from Jeremy and others is to really care about people and get to know them and be able to talk to them when they're struggling a little bit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that'll come back in rewards to you that they'll help you when you're struggling as well. So I think it's all communication is how you treat people re with respect and treat people as you would want to be treated. Great, I know um, I know. in your department we have spoken in, in preparation even for this meeting at times about some of the things that you do internally to mm -hmm. foster leadership. Um, can you talk mm -hmm. about those a little bit? Sure, uh, and those were fostered. I mean, we at, at Florida we 
all of us didn't really like going through the Covey Seven habits of highly <laughs> successful people, but we we did it and we went through it and we realized at the end that, that was a great deal. So, at the University of Georgia, what we've tried to do is every semester take 15 of our mid-level managers and go through a uh, a weekly session, an hour with a member of our senior team to really talk about their roles, their responsibilities, and to always talk about leadership values because this group of, of staff members supervise people. They may not be at the top of the flow chart, but they're individuals that range from our, our, our trainers to our equipment staff to sports information. They always have a link with people and a lot of times it's student athletes. So we're trying to provide a platform to where they can listen. It's all people opt in. So it's not mandatory. Um, we have 15 because that's how many chairs are in our conference room but we've done it for 10 semesters now. And it's really something at the end of that process, we find out what did we pass, where do we fail, and every time it comes up that they want more Q&A, instead of listening to someone for 55 minutes and five minutes for, for activities there. But I do think it's something that our staff appreciates. Uh, they want to learn, they're like a sponge. I think really staff, because they're opting in again. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a free lunch involved too, so oh. that may get some people <laughs> uh, engaged. But I really think it's something that's beneficial. Uh, it helped me in my leadership journey when I was you know, close to 50 years old, or in the late 40s. So there's, there's, there's no perfect time to start, but what we're trying to do is start these young people on their leadership path early in their career and then they can decide what to do with it. But at least there's an opportunity for them to get better and for us to help them maybe achieve their dreams. Excellent. College athletics is such a, um, there's a lot going on in the enterprise mm -hmm. right now. There's yeah. a lot of, you know, it's so public. Right. There's a lot of pressures involved. There's a lot mm -hmm. of stakeholders involved. How does that test the, your leadership, your, 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 you know, how does that test everything that you're about and what you do? It's, it, it's test, I mean, you, you are stretched every day. Uh, there's not one day, I think, where any athletic director or any leader can sit back and take a deep breath and say, I figured it out, uh, because you never know what's around the corner. And mm -hmm. I think that's something about our profession is someone will say, how are you doing, Greg? And I'll look at my watch and say, as of 1030 in the morning, things are going great. <laughs> now, what 1031 brings, we don't know because as many, as many other athletic directors talk about that call at two or three in the morning, mm -hmm. this unexpected call. So there's planned activities, uh, but I would, I would almost be certain that every athletic director on their daily chart has free time to devote to things that just pop up. It may be an employee that just wants to pop in to see you. There may be a, a situation of a, a coach that, that has a problem, you've got to pivot to that. So part of our job is being able just to pivot to many different areas and and it really takes away time from long range planning, at least in my case, as far as long range planning and things that you may want to do to develop in the long term because there's so many short term things now that develop social media now that requires immediate attention because if word gets out and it's the wrong word, you've got to scamper and try to tap that down. So there's just a lot of things to juggle, a lot more good than bad. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're trying to make the lives of your student athletes the best it can be for your staff as well, too. So if you can block out all the criticism, all the clutter, all the media attention, and just really center it down and get back into your lanes about whether the student athlete is a football player or an equestrian student athlete or a tennis player, what am I doing to provide them that opportunity that allows them to excel in the classroom, to achieve some championships, to grow up so when they leave the university, they're a better person. So if you can pare it down to that, and at the same time you have a staff that's motivated, that appreciates everything the university offers in a great working environment, uh, then you can pretty much be, be okay with that. Mm -hmm. uh, you're never totally satisfied, but if you can focus it down to those two things, I think you could say at the end of the day that you're doing your number one priority in those two areas. And, that's what you have to do when so much is swirling around. You have yeah. to center it back to why are we here and what is our main role and then let the chips fall where they may. What do you, advice do you have for people who want your job someday? Uh, first, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> uh, but I would say you, you have to have a very strong support staff. 
Uh, I've always uh, said in my situation, happy wife, happy life. Uh, Cheryl knew what we were getting into 40 years ago when I was the head women's tennis coach at Georgia and, uh, and also the assistant sports information director. So those two uh, seasons of, of practice seasons and those two areas took up a lot of weekends. So you know going in that there's going to be a lot of weekend work. There are not going to be a lot of free weekends. Uh, a lot of our a lot of our events happen at night and on the weekend. So if you're really in it with both feet, uh, you're going to be involved in it all the time. But I do know that if that part of my life was not stabilized, it'd be very difficult to do that, to do a great job. And with children, uh, you have to juggle, you know, should I be at this event or should I be at my child's softball game or should I be at their play? So there's so many things to really evaluate in that. But I do think that... Um, You've got to have a tremendous support system, have a great list of mentors that you can call when you need help, and to have that support system that can be there for you when you need it the most. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Appreciate Thank it. you, Katie. My pleasure.